Founder fans, Jason here, and today's founder is Goose Van Shake, the leader of the Onondaga Expedition in 1779 and a Brigadier General in the Continental Army. Now before we get started, I need to talk about the pronunciation of this name. Uh, it looks to me as if his name is Goose Van Shake. Uh, his last name might be pronounced a variety of ways, but more importantly, his first name is probably pronounced Goosen. Now, this is because not only did he spell his name with an N at the end a few times, and he spelled it three different ways over the course of his life, but he seemed to have been named after an ancestor who in the mid-1600s was a brewer in Albany, New York, and that ancestor also pronounced their name Goosen. So I am going to pronounce his name Goosen as best I can, though it looks like Goose to me, and if I slip up, you'll forgive me. That being said, Goose Van Schenk was already a leader of citizens of Albany, uh, in 1765, when the Stamp Act came around, in fact, he was a signatory to the Stamp, the, I'm sorry, the Albany Constitution. Now, this was not a real constitution like a government. It was actually the founding document of the Albany Sons of Liberty. It's often overlooked that Albany had a pretty hardcore Sons of Liberty at the time of the American Revolution. Additionally, what was said in the constitution uh, was similar to what was being said in resolutions throughout the colonies at the time. Most local communities would get together and pass resolutions they would send to the colonial government and then passed on to Britain. Uh, Albany just decided to call it a constitution instead. Important part is, Goose Van Schenck was an early leader a decade before the outbreak of the Revolutionary War. Additionally, by that time, he had already served in the French and Indian War and he was wounded in his face. He had a real serious face wound that would bother him for the rest of his life. Despite this, he joins the Patriots when the Revolutionary War breaks out, and off he goes to fight in the war. He is immediately appointed a colonel and spends the entirety of the war serving in the Continental Army, primarily remaining in upstate New York, uh, dealing with Native Americans on the frontier. And this is where the Onondaga expedition comes in. In June of 1779, Goose Van Shake is put in charge of Fort Stanwix, uh, sometimes called Fort Schuyler, but uh, an important fort on the frontier of upstate New York, right where uh, the Native Americans really held control of the territory further west, and the Patriots claimed the territory a little further east, though there were, of course, members of the Iroquois Nation living there at the time. Now, Goose Van Schenck, just before the more famous Sullivan-Clinton expedition that went through upstate New York and chased out the Native Americans, burned many of their villages and crops, Goose Van Schenck does kind of like a prelude to this, uh, where he goes to the biggest town owned by the Onondaga Nation, one of the six tribes of the Iroquois at the time, uh, and the closest one that was hostile. So he actually leads an expedition out with only less than 600 men, and they are wildly successful. They don't lose a man. Most of the Native Americans, as would later happen that summer with the Sullivan-Clinton campaign, uh, most of the Native Americans did flee the scene before Goose Van Schenck arrives. Now, uh, Schenck does show up. He destroys the village, and he destroys uh, all the crops, and he does take several hostages. Interestingly, he's actually accused of his men being too extreme. In fact, uh, not only are there claimed to have been uh, assaults, but sexual assaults were accused of. Now, this actually goes to the Continental Congress, who does an investigation into Goose's conduct, and they realize that there is nothing, they determine that there is nothing uh, out of the ordinary that had happened. Uh, in fact, instead of being punished for anything, Shank is uh, then thanked for, quote, their activity and good conduct in the late expedition. Now, after this, Shank remains an important leader in upstate New York, but doesn't really have many notable battles. I did actually skip over that he had already served in both uh, uh, the uh, Saratoga campaign and the Battle of Monmouth. And in fact, in the Saratoga campaign, he was again wounded. Uh, it had been almost 20 years since his last wound, but again, wounded fighting for the Patriots. He then, uh, after the Onondaga expedition, takes a bit of a backseat, but at the end of the war, after a truce was declared while they were waiting for peace, and George Washington kind of starts handing out some brevet uh, promotions, uh, which brevet means essentially honorary promotions to a higher rank, though you don't get the actual authority of the rank. Uh, Goose Van Schenck is one of the people breveted as a brigadier general in the Continental Army, the second highest rank you could have. I guess third if you're not 
you know, there's George Washington, and then there's Major General, and then Brigadier General. So he is promoted to one of the highest ranks. Uh, unfortunately, about this time, he's making several trips to Philadelphia to see if his face wound has now seems to have developed some kind of cancer uh, because he continues to get treatment for that. It doesn't really work. Uh, he does retire back to his home in Albany, where I, I should have mentioned also his father had been mayor, so he was able to work his way up the political ranks pretty easily uh, with, with a father that's mayor. That being said, he goes back home uh, and passes away in 1787, July 4th, 1787, the, uh, I'm sorry, 1789, the 13th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, and just long enough to see the Constitution instituted in George Washington take over as president. Uh, when he passes away, they say, they do say that it was from what they believed was the cancer on his face. Now, I don't know if it's because his wound developed into something that resembled cancer, and that's what the obituary of the local paper believed it was, or uh, if it was actual cancer had developed. Unfortunately, he does pass away, uh, although at this point already in his uh, early, well, early 50s, so not even that old. But that's a brief overview of the life of Goose Van Schenk, a really interesting person from Albany. Now, I've called him Goose the entire time, despite wanting to call him Goosen, but I see the word Goose right next to me here. How am I not supposed to call him Goose? It's a great name. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, hit like on your way out, and if you're new here, subscribe. I put out videos about people with regular names from the American Revolution seven days a week.